You're watching Y254 TV Business Tuesday interview. Right now, we are talking about the impact of COVID-19 to businesses and manufacturing industry. I'm speaking to Krishna Arsha, CEO of One Stop Enterprise. Send us your comments or uh, questions to all our social media platforms at Y254 channel. Good evening. Hi, Hilary. How are you? Um, awesome. Great. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you for having me. Now, COVID-19 has affected almost every person in this society, uh, be it uh, an employee in the office or someone who has been doing the uh, small businesses, they have been affected in one way or the other. And I am sure even you as a manufacturer, there's a way you have been affected. And I would like to know, uh, with the continuing measures that have been put in place, how have you been coping with the situation in your manufacturing company? Thanks, Hilary. So first of all, the biggest problem we faced was trying to encourage social distancing in the factory. Mm -hmm. When you're working in a factory situation, we're doing food processing, social distancing was never an issue. And mm -hmm. suddenly come March, mm -hmm. we're being told that you've got to have two meters separating you. Mm -hmm. So we've had to incorporate social distancing in the factory. Mm -hmm. The other thing is having masks on all the time. Mm -hmm. It's very, very uncomfortable having a mask on. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that we've had to encourage. Mm -hmm. We always had good hygiene where our staff were very well trained in washing hands as often as they needed to. Mm -hmm. So that was not something new or something we struggled with. Mm -hmm. We are at a situation where mon most people have been laid off and especially as we're talking about the social distancing, we saw some of the, f uh, the first containment measures was working with shifts or in shifts. And uh, did this affect your uh, labor in terms of reducing the number of people working at a particular time or how did you uh, apply the measure? So we've always run a very lean machine. We've never been overly overstaffed. However, what we did do was we started uh, sending people on leave, which is normal paid leave. In the past, we've been sending everyone at one time on leave. This time, because of COVID, we decided that we would send two or three people every for, for two weeks leave. Mm -hmm. And that's how we've reduced the number of staff at any given time in the factory. Mm -hmm. I know having reduced the number of people working at a particular period of time, did the um, the uh, supply or the production of certain um, measure you say you you get to have a lot did you reduce the number of production yeah our production capacity reduced marginally mm -hmm. um, obviously it would and also what you see is a lot of staff are doing something else in addition to what their normal duties are just because they're covering up for someone else mm -hmm. where you're working with two drivers instead of more right. um, and so you've got your workload has increased as well and are they are they understanding the situation if they have to work for more hours or maybe have to work harder like for two people they are understanding they're not working more hours because we're also very aware of the curfew the curfew was much earlier mm -hmm. so we would close the factory at 4 30. Mm -hmm. now we're closing at 5 or 5 30 so that people get home on time mm -hmm. but yes our staff we've been lucky we're, we're they are very very understanding that they know that they have to make up for someone else's absence mm -hmm. and uh since you're in the food, food industry how how is the is the market doing for you we were not too badly affected. You know, when there was a lot of panic buying, we really enjoyed ourselves. Mm -hmm. Sales were brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, the month of June has seen a, mark, a, a reduction in sales, mm -hmm. but we're also hoping that come July, things pick up again. Mm -hmm. um, and we're praying that the economy actually is slowly opened up. Mm -hmm. other, other than the containment measures that the government has put in place to ensure the spread of COVID-19 has stopped, or what we are saying is, um, containing every person, containing every situation that we can. Uh, what else have you done in your company to ensure that we have fought COVID-19 and we've won? So our staff are all tested mm -hmm. and they're continuously tested, not only for COVID, but all other sorts of uh, diseases that can be passed on because of food processing. Mm -hmm. This is something we've done for years. We've just had to add COVID onto that, however much it's been expensive for us. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we've done is that we've consciously, as employers, decided that we're not giving our staff pay cuts. Awesome. 
So that is a conscious decision as mm -hmm. employers we've made. Mm -hmm. The first question when everything was going on, our staff and our shop steward came and asked us, so, you know, what's going to happen? Because they were scared. They were, they were hearing from their friends. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, until we can manage, we're not going to give you a pay cut. The day we can't is when we're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So, so far, touch wood, we've been lucky and we've never given a pay cut. I must say that um, was kind of you because I knew most of the people were sent home on unpaid leave. Others have been uh, given the pay cuts of which they didn't take it kindly, uh, considering how the economy has been even before COVID-19. Yeah. Now, um, tell me about this business now. Um, I understand you've been in operation for years. Yes. Uh, how has your success story been? So I'll start with the history of the business. It was begun in 1982 by my father and his brothers. Mm -hmm. they, our family suffered a financial hardship mm -hmm. and we filed for bankruptcy. There was a point where there was no money for even milk for myself and my cousins. Mm -hmm. And um, the fallback, as usual, is you go back to what you know. And my grandfather said, well, my mom, was very good at cooking and she still is and why not mm -hmm. and that's the birth of one stop All right. we started they started at home on these huge big jikos that would take like the biggest bag of um, charcoal mm -hmm. um, and they would fry crisps and chevda and things on that mm -hmm. they grew and we moved into a premises in gara which mm -hmm. we occupied until 2018 Mm -hmm. Just the other day. <laughs> Just the other day, where okay. we needed more space as we're growing, mm -hmm. and we decided to move to Babadogo into a nice new factory premises. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I must say it has been quite a journey. Uh, it's only that you didn't go to details. We can all already tell how it has been. But of course, we are speaking to the youth who would want to come up with something, who would want to go back to what they know like you have mentioned now how do i do i materialize the idea that i have and make it work you've got to try you have to keep on trying and it's hard work mm -hmm. i remember up to uh probably the 90s my dad was literally still frying crisps alongside the staff mm -hmm. so nothing comes easy you you mentioning crisp and i i know some of the uh, the youth or any person I've seen on traffic in Nairobi selling crepes and yes. they're like, uh, I want to find a nini. Yeah. You know, they feel like this is not the kind of a job. What would you say about most of us who say, I can only do this and that, but the other thing I can't? My mom has always told me there's no job that's a small job. Mm -hmm. You will find me even in the factory helping where there's help that is required. My mom and dad still come to work for half the day mm -hmm. and they will do. My mom will sometimes sit down and help them pack a packet of crisps if that's what's required. And especially the last few months where we've been short staffed. Mm -hmm. She's been doing whatever needs to be done. So no job is too small to be done. Mm -hmm. And you don't know where, which job will actually make you become the millionaire that you want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we are at a, a state where we have a number of youths who are unemployed and it has been an outcry to the government and to every other stakeholder. We do not have our youth employed. And the question that will be there is, uh, or the response that comes from many is, find something to do. And then again, this, this uh, argument from some of them, do you all become entrepreneurs? Why not? Then who consumes for who? There's always room for consumption. Because mm -hmm. what you're going to do, I may not do. Mm -hmm. So you're creating a market for what you need to do. All right. Now it brings me to the question about um, competition. How do you fit in the competition? Uh, is there fair competition in what you produce and others? And then how are you able to uh, sustain yourself uh, throughout the uh, business enterprise? So. Within the industry, there is fair competition. Mm -hmm. However, we have people, Indian women, making these things at home. Mm -hmm. And that's totally unfair because we have to be compliant with NEMA, CABS, city county licenses, etc. Mm -hmm. When you're making something from home, you're not fully compliant. Mm -hmm. 
So your overheads are, are much lower. When you're running a whole enterprise, your overheads are high. Because you're fully compliant, you're f you've got safety measures in place. So that's r where the unfair competition comes in. And someone would argue, I don't have enough money to have, um, say, uh, somewhere to work from unless I work from home. I, I know of people who cook from home and they supply out here. They don't have to fight with the kanji in the streets. They cook from home. They don't have enough money. What don't you think? I agree. Easy? You don't have enough money right now, but you've got to start somewhere. That's where you start, but don't stay there forever. Mm -hmm. I, I have to move. You have to move. You have to grow. Mm -hmm. Once you grow, you mm -hmm. need to become fully compliant. All right. Um, why do you think most of the youth are reluctant to take up opportunities that come even if they are as humble as they could be? Could it be finances? Mm -hmm. I don't types. know if finances sometimes does play a role. We even as industries mm -hmm. face times when finances are tight for us. Right now we're facing financials. We know we have to play around. Mm -hmm. um, it could be finances. It could be lack of mentors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be lack of resources. Mm -hmm. You have mentioned of a mentor. Do you, uh, are you are you bringing someone to in this line or maybe in the other line to help them become what they have wished to become? So we've done it within our own factory where we've seen two of our very valued employees grow mm -hmm. into positions of supervisors mm -hmm. and into positions where they are now able to autonomously make decisions and mm -hmm. where I can trust them and say, okay, you can make that decision. And I've seen them make decisions and they've been the right decisions. Mm -hmm. I am also being mentored at the moment. So I am not over the learning process. Mm -hmm. um, no one has approached me for mentorship, but I would love to be able to, you know, impart my knowledge to someone when the time is right. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe as you wind up, I would like to know how do you, uh, we, most of the people have a problem of financial management, especially when they have a business, you will find them, they say, I had this profit, but I can't account for it. Not that they misused, but there's a way they can't account for everything. How do you keep your um, records? How do you manage your finances as far as your business is of concern? When you're small, you can't afford an accountant, but someone recently told me, get a friend. I'm sure within your friends you've got someone who's an accountant. Let that person help you even if it's on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Secondly, make sure you know where every penny is coming from and where every penny is going. Mm -hmm. Even if you're putting it down in an exercise book and account for it. Mm -hmm. That would help someone go yes. far to manage You need to finances. make sure you know what's coming in and what's going out. Mm -hmm. The minute you're not on top of that, then you don't know where your money is going. Exactly. And don't use your business money for yourself. I thought the profit is mine. No, the profit is not yet yours. The profit is to be put back in the business until mm -hmm. there's so much profit in the business that it can become yours. And is there a time that it will be enough? Yes, there is always enough. Oh, all right, because I know billionaires always look for, for another billion. Yes, and you'll never stop look. looking. <laughs> you never stop looking, but you once you have your billion, you know you can spend 50 million. Awesome. Now, uh, I would like you to speak to someone out there and tell them, especially the young people, uh, regarding now that we are speaking of COVID-19, is it about time they come up with a new idea? Um, how are they supposed to cope with the situation with the SMEs? And maybe an encouragement to someone who feels like they have lost it all during this pandemic. Thank you. I think you just need to keep your head up. The pandemic is going to end, but it's still here with us for a while. Um, there's a lot of information out there. There's so many webinars, so many Zoom meetings that you can go to, so many courses that have been subsidized or free that whilst you're at home, whilst you're doing this, you can actually be in, you know, expanding your knowledge and nothing is lost. Thank you. 
All right, thank you so much for coming and sharing your story and encouraging our young people to taking up our chances out there and making the best out of it, especially uh, the financial management. I have to take care of myself. Thank you so much <laughs> thank you. for keeping us company. It has been uh, Business Tuesday. Uh, we were speaking about the impact of COVID-19 to the businesses and enterprise. My guest was Prishna Shah, uh, CEO of One Stop Enterprise. Uh, thank you so much for thank coming. You. Uh, have yourself a very good night. My name is Edereva Hillary. Goodbye.